Hi, my name is Eileen Kristen, and you are tuned to Power Magazine Online. first television exposure when I was uh, about 14 years old. My mentor was a very famous dancer named Matt Maddox, Matt Maddox. He was extraordinary and um, he gave me my first job. He asked me if I wanted to be on the Bell Telephone Hour. And from doing that television show, I realized I had the bug. My first theater experience, I did a Broadway show with uh, the late, great Michael Bennett called Henry Sweet Henry. I worked with Michael Bennett for about four years and then I realized my acting strength was greater than my, my dance uh, ability because I was pretty much acting my way through all of those um, dance routines. The character I played on Ryan's Hope is Delia Reed, Ryan Ryan, Coleridge, Crane Coleridge. Obviously I was married a lot. And in 1975 my agent called me and he said I want to send you up for the soap opera. And I go, I don't want to do a soap opera, I'm a comedian. And he said, no, I think this one is different and I think you'll like it. Besides, it won't run any longer than six months. At that time you couldn't email, so I went to his office and I looked at the, what they call the Bible for Ryan's Hope and the breakdown of the character of Delia. And I have to say that I was very fascinated in what I was reading. I went into an audition for it and the wonderful casting person, Shirley Rich, the late, great Shirley Rich, she wanted me to get this role. So she really coached me on it. And uh, I went in, I did a great audition, and then I tested for it, and they said I was extraordinary because a button popped off my shirt as I was being screen tested for it, and I just kept on. And it was quite an amazing, uh, amazing group of people, really brilliant, brilliant actors. Historically, I think people will say that Ryan's Hope is the thinking man's soap. I guess it was in 2001, my agent called me and he said that uh, the head writers of One Life to Live were interested in me for a role that they were writing. But they needed to know if I was going to do it because uh, they wanted to kind of cater it to me, which was great because that's how Roxanne Balsam was born. And it's so funny, when my agent called me up uh, about the part and he said, uh, well, she's from the wrong side of the tracks, and I said, so what is her name? And he said, Roxanne Balsam, and I went, Roxanne. And it has been the most amazing 10 years of my life. I have to say that as much as I love Delia, uh, Roxy was really, really a treat for me. I am probably much closer to Roxy than I am to Delia. Delia was very hard for me. Roxy was is the real, uh, you know, party girl side of me. Uh, I always say that uh, Roxy is the most fun that you can have legally. <laughs> A step away from that, it would be illegal action. <laughs> but it's it's a it's a real part of me, and I got the job right after 9/11, and I really felt that people needed to be cheered up. I very much wanted to make her a humorous character. The first month, it was rather kind of serious, and I actually played her kind of mean and lean. I wanted to do that, and, but they wanted the audience to like me, so they started writing more humorous things, and I was you know I was totally down. My son, I want to talk to him. Just want to help. This is all your father's fault. So I always get to play these characters that have some other secret thing going on or some weird thing that they have to do in life. These characters are very interesting. People that are somewhat disenfranchised, troubled, a little desperate, on the wrong side of the law. I just did um, uh, SVU, Law and Order, and I played uh, a woman who was an ex-beauty queen who uh, who left her husband and her son thinks that she's been a bad mother and we find out that she hasn't really been a bad mother. She had to leave the bad father who abused me. So I've been very happy with that. I don't like playing normal people at all. So what does an actor do in between TV gigs? Definitely for a new person, uh, taking voice lessons is very important, taking dance class is very important. They, and you have other people that you can play things off of and find out things about the business. I think some of the workshops are good. 
to do uh, in front of casting agents because uh, they need to see your work and that might be the first initial way that they can get to see it if you're not actively performing. But I think an acting class is really good, even better than an audition class, although it's good to take an audition class. It shows you how to you know, get by in auditions because it's, it's a little different than acting. Uh, so there's certain politics connected to that. In between, I do a lot of off-Broadway. I do a lot of readings of plays, and I also do music. And my music is, I write my own music. It's on the jazzy side. I do a lot of charity work, and I sing a lot of benefits. I uh, do a lot of things for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. I think that they've been extraordinary with the amount of money that they've raised and the good that they've done uh, because people are now living with AIDS. I have a lot of friends who passed away, well, and now that's not the case, so it's great. Uh, I also used to work with uh, Children's Aid Society. Uh, I worked with a lot of homeless organizations back in the day. And uh, whoever calls me up and asks me to do something for them, I do it. It always keeps me sane in times of unemployment. I am working on a reality show uh, with um, my very dear, my spiritual son, my ex-fiance is in it also. He is uh, a teacher and he's kind of the father and uh, we were just a dysfunctional family. And so we went back to the homeless shelter where I met my kids and that was quite emotional because it's been completely fixed up. And it's really quite beautiful now. We were in one of the rooms, but there's a lot of memories for those kids, and it was not easy to go back there. But uh, we'll be doing more stuff like that, and really in depth of like, you know, how difficult life is when you have to kind of start all over and pick up the pieces, which is what the show is called, picking up the pieces. And because I worked for ten years, and it was such a great job, and then now I got to find another job, and hopefully there'll be one there for me. And um, and so all of us are going through these changes. So that's so right now, instead of going, well, why me? Why me without a job? I go, well, what's next? And I don't really know what's next right now. I'm, I've been doing a lot of readings and a lot of things over the actor's studio of new plays. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what's next. Uh, I will do some kind of music project when I get back to New York. And uh, hopefully I can write some more songs, which is really what I would like to do right now, as well as work with uh, young writers, new writers I, I, on their plays. I think I'm usually very helpful. So I'll be doing that. Of course, i got to come up with a job with some money attached to it.